Maltese folklore is the folk tradition which has developed in Malta over the centuries, and expresses the cultural identity of the Maltese people. Festas Local festivals celebrating the patron saint of the local parish, similar to those in southern Italy, a common place in Malta. Several festa take place in different towns and villages across Malta every weekend in the summer. A festa reaches its apex with a high mass featuring a sermon on the life and achievements of the patron saint. The religious atmosphere quickly gives way to several days of revelry, band processions, fireworks, and late-night parties. In the weeks leading up to a local festa, the main streets around the parish are richly decorated, with brocade banners, ornate religious sculptures mounted on pedestals and all around the zintir of the parish church. Hawkers set up stalls stocked with food and the local variety of nougat. The parish church itself is typically illuminated at night, although the fiacli of yesteryear have been supplanted by bright-colored electric bulbs. Some of the seaside towns feature a unique and popular medieval game known as the Gostra. Although the word itself is derived from the Italian Giostra, Maltese Gostra has little in common with medieval jousting, and is in fact derived from the Neapolitan game of the cocaine pole. It involves a 10-meter long greased pole, mounted on a barge out in the bay, perched on a precarious angle out over the sea. Competing youths scramble at the pole, in an attempt to snatch a pennant, flag or other trophy from the top of the pole. Band clubs Virtually every parish in Malta has a band club, and in some cases, too. The musicians are generally a lively combination of dilettantes and volunteers, with a sprinkling of professional or semi-professional players. The bands typically consist of woodwind and brass instruments, and percussion. They are feature performers in the village festa, accompanying the statue of the parish's titular saint with celebratory music. Their music is very similar to their Sicilian and southern Italian counterparts. Although drums and flutes are known to have participated in religious processions in Malta as early as the 16th century, Today's Maltese band clubs are in fact a more recent introduction to Maltese culture. 19th century, at the height of British rule over Malta, the village bands were in part assembled in response to, and heavily influenced by, the marching bands of the British military. Indeed, the oldest of today's Maltese bands was set up by Filippo Gallia whose father was a bandmaster with the British military. A few years after setting up his band in 1851 in Zebug, Filippo followed in his father's footsteps and made a distinguished military career as a bandmaster. Other renowned Maltese musicians like Inder Borg are also accredited with the setting up of bands of which only one survives to this day. Although Maestro Borgel also took charge of the Banda di San Filippo in 1860, However, throughout the 1800s, Malta experienced a steady influx of Sicilian and Italian refugees and immigrants, fleeing from civil war or under sentence of exile, who stimulated and popularized the concept of a village band. Weddings Traditional Maltese weddings featured the bridal party walking in procession beneath an ornate canopy from the home of the bride's family to the parish church with singers trailing behind serenading the bride and groom. The Maltese word for this custom is Ilgilwa. This custom along with many others has long since disappeared from the islands, in the face of modern practices. New wives would wear the gonola, a traditional item of Maltese clothing. However, it is no longer worn in modern Malta. Today's couples are married in churches, chapels or hotels in the village or town of their choice. The nuptials are usually followed by a lavish wedding reception, often including several hundred guests. Occasionally, couples will try to incorporate elements of the traditional Maltese wedding in their celebration. There has been a recent resurgence of interest in traditional weddings. The annually held Maltese traditional wedding in the village of Uriac is very popular. Around May of each year, thousands of Maltese and tourists attend a traditional Maltese wedding in the style of the 16th century. This includes Ilgilwa, which leads the bride and groom to a wedding ceremony in various places such as the Parvis of Saint. 
Andrews Chapel. The reception that follows features folklore music and dancing. In September 2008, the third edition of the QALA International Folk Festival in Gozo featured its TIEG Florid Herantic. This reenactment of a traditional Gozatan wedding was officiated at Bishop Michael Buttigieg Square in front of the Stone Cross Column, after which, a procession with the newlyweds led up to the main square of the village of Qala, where a typical festin was awaiting them, serving traditional delicacies of the period, birth and childhood. Traditional Maltese proverbs reveal a cultural preoccupation with childbearing and fertility. Izwig Mingaj Tabia Mar Fihx Gordia. This is a belief that Malta shares with many other Mediterranean cultures, most notably, Israel, Palestine and Morocco. In Maltese folktales, the local variant of the classic closing formula, and they all lived happily ever after, is, you gamru, you t gamru, you spick it. Rural Malta shares in common with Mediterranean and traditional Jewish society a number of superstitions regarding fertility, menstruation, and pregnancy, including the avoidance of cemeteries during the months leading up to childbirth, and avoiding the preparation of certain foods during menses. Pregnant women are encouraged to satisfy their cravings for specific foods out of fear that their unborn child will bear a representational birthmark. Maltese and Sicilian women also share certain traditions that are believed to predict the sex of an unborn child, such as the cycle of the moon on the anticipated date of birth, whether the baby is carried high or low during pregnancy, and the movement of a wedding ring dangled on a string above the abdomen. Traditionally, Maltese newborns were baptized as promptly as possible, partly out of fear of limbo should the child die in infancy, and partly because according to Maltese folklore an unbaptized child is not yet a Christian, but still a Turk. Traditional Maltese delicacies served at a baptismal feast include biscottini tal magmudia, it torta tal marmorata, and a liqueur known as rose olin, made with rose petals, violets and almonds. On a child's first birthday, in a tradition that still survives today, Maltese parents would organize a game known as Il Cuccia, where a variety of symbolic objects would be randomly placed around the seated child. These may include a hard-boiled egg, a Bible, crucifix or rosary beads, a book, and so on. Whichever object the child shows most interest in is said to reveal the child's path and fortunes in adulthood. Money refers to a rich future while a book expresses intelligence and a possible career as a teacher. Infants who select a pencil or pen will be writers. Choosing Bibles or rosary beads refers to a clerical or monastic life. If the child chooses a hard-boiled egg, it will have a long life and many of children. More recent additions include calculators, thread and wooden spoons, folk tales. In the early years of the 20th century, Maltese folktales were collected by the Jesuit scholar Manuel Magri and published in the series Cobtal Mof dia Tasmin and also in the collection Rejef Misriji Etna. This collection of material inspired subsequent researchers and academics to gather traditional tales fables and legends from all over the archipelago. Magri's work also inspired a series of comic books released by Club Cod Malton in 1984. The titles included Bin is Sultan Jezu Weg X Zeba Tatrong I at Mu and I Argier. Some of the stories are about giants, witches and dragons, others are about imaginary Maltese beings. These include the Korkor or Gorgor, a grey and slimy creature who roamed the streets at night and could smell out naughty boys and ill belliaga, a monster that lived in wells and could pull in children who looked into them. Other festivities Carnival Maltese Carnival has had an important place on the cultural calendar for just under five centuries. Introduced to the islands by Grandmaster Piero de Pont in 1535, it is held during the week leading up to Ash Wednesday and typically includes masked balls, fancy dress and grotesque mask competitions. 
lavish late-night parties, a colorful, ticker-tape parade of allegorical floats presided over by King Carnival, marching bands and costumed revelers. Holy Week Holy Week starts on Palm Sunday and ends on Easter Sunday. Numerous religious traditions, most of them inherited from one generation to the next, are part of the Pascal celebrations in the Maltese Islands, honoring the death and resurrection of Jesus. Naja Naja, or Elim Naja is one of the most important dates on the Maltese cultural calendar. Officially, it is a national festival dedicated to the feast of Saints Peter and Saint Paul. In fact its roots can be traced back to the pagan Roman feast of Luminaria, when the early summer night of June 29 was illuminated by torches and bonfires. A national feast since the rule of the knights, Naja is a traditional Maltese festival of food, religion and music. The festivities still commence today with the reading of the Bandu, an official governmental announcement, which has been read on this day in Malta since the 16th century. Originally, Naja was celebrated outside street. Paul's Grotto, in the north of Malta, however, by 1613 the focus of the festivities had shifted to the Cathedral of St. Paul, in Umdina, and featured torchlight processions, the firing of 100 petards, horse races, and races for men, boys and slaves. Modern Naja festivals take place in and around the woodlands of Basket, just outside the town of Rabat. It is said that under the nights, this was the one day in the year when the Maltese were allowed to hunt and eat wild rabbit, which was otherwise reserved for the hunting pleasures of the nights. The close connection between Naja and rabbit stew remains strong today. In 1854 British Governor William Reed launched an agricultural show at Basket which is still being held today. The farmer's exhibition is still a seminal part of the Naja festivities today. Naja today is one of the few occasions when participants may hear traditional Maltese, Ghana. Traditionally, grooms would promise to take their newly or recently wed brides to Naja during the first of year of marriage and, for luck, Many of the brides would attend in their full wedding gown and veil, although this custom has long since disappeared from the islands.